think we'd go all the way. It was terrific. Stop worrying about it, okay? Hope Mom's not up yet. Are you gonna tell her? Of course not. She hustles me enough as it is. You sure you love me? I'm sure. Now for new business. Of course, school elections are in September, but we start taking nominations now. Three boys for president, three girls for secretary. Why is that? Why is what? Why do boys run for president and girls run for secretary? Because that's the way it's always been. Tradition. Tradition? I make a motion to change it. I think both offices should be open to all students. And I second that. Gina Swenson makes a motion that we open up both the nominations for president and secretary to all students. All in favor? Yeah. 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 Uh, nine in favor. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay, three. Yeah. All opposed? Yeah. Yeah. The motion passes. Yeah. Any other new business? I move we adjourn. It's the best motion I've heard all afternoon. Second? Second? I second it. You got it. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Nice. All right. <laughs> Gina. Oh. Congratulations, dear. You were terrific. Well, thank you. <laughs> well, now that the opportunity is there, why don't you take advantage of it? Gee, what a great idea, huh? <laughs> <laughs> right on, sister. All right. <laughs> Wayne? Wayne? Oh! Oh! Wayne! What's the matter? Oh, nothing. Come on, Gina, what's the matter? I'm late. Late for what? Your period? 
How late? Two weeks. Oh, wow. I, I thought you know how to take care of those things. I thought you were prepared. We got carried away. Remember? Queen of Sheba. I'm sorry, Dad. Hey, don't tell me you're sorry. Your mama's been out there working two hours already. If you can't get up at six o'clock with the rest of the family, you take to getting to bed at eight o'clock. You hear? I'm sorry, Mom. Overslept. A person could freeze to death waiting for you. You know what? You look a little pale. Sure. Just ate some pizza last night. But you're okay. Sure. I'm great. Go on up to the house and thaw out. Go, go, go. Look, push the apples. They're starting to shrivel. Okay. Oh, I'm okay, really. I'm okay. See you practice, okay? Practice. Okay. So you really think you are? Well, I gotta find out. Well, I got practice at four. Does that mean more to you than me? No. Of course not. Gina Swenson? Yes. Would you come with me, please? Okay, Gina. I am, uh... Mrs. Morton, and I have the result of your urinalysis. And it's positive. Does that mean I'm pregnant? But you're not too far along that we could terminate it right here if you want to. Who has to know? We encourage you to involve your parents, but legally the decision's entirely yours. Gina, it's not the end of the world. We perform dozens here every month. Nationwide, there are over a million abortions a year. How much does it cost? $150 for everything. Well, if you can't afford it, we'll apply for state aid. Well, what if I decide to have it? Well, I would give that a lot of thought if I were you. If you do decide to have it, we'll refer you to the best obstetrician available. If you do go full term, Gina, be sure to get good prenatal care. It's very important for both of you. Both of us? You and the baby. Oh. Fifty dollars, huh? Yeah. I'll raise the money. I don't know how, but I will. 
We knew what we were doing, Wayne. I'll get the money. Beats driving trucks and selling fruit by the roadside. No consideration for anybody else. Mom. Your father's gonna be home soon. Dinner's not ready. Mom. This isn't finished. What is so important that you couldn't get home on time Mom. to do your job? I ask you one simple thing. It's not complicated. Mom. Just once this week, I asked you to Mom. be home on time. Just Mom. on time. Not what is it? I'm pregnant. No, 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 no. No, 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 you fool! Oh, Gina! Gina, Gina! Oh, how could you be so stupid? I thought you had more brains than me. You mean you were? Do you think your father and I would have gotten married if we didn't have to? I didn't know. He never told me. Oh, baby. Oh, baby, shh. Baby. We'll work it out. Look at all that. be a mistake. You'd end up just like us, working from dawn till midnight. I want something better for you. This isn't so bad. Oh, isn't it? Living on the edge of town? The only time I ever see anyone is if they stop and buy something for me at the stand. Oh, hello, dear. And how's your daughter? They don't even know my name. And not one of them has ever invited us to their homes. We are nothing because we have nothing. Outcast, your father and me. Him selling wood and plowing the roads, me at the stand. Outcasts. I guess I've got a tone. No. No, he'll never have to know. Never? Gina, in my day, it was a big deal. It was uh, illegal. But now it's nothing. They even list it as a, a D and C. Oh, sweetheart. You're a junior in high school. You're smart enough for a college scholarship. Please, Gina. Don't ruin your life the way I did. Gina, get rid of it. How do you think Dad would take it? He'd be very angry. And deep down, it'd break his heart.
I got the money. 150? Yeah. All 150. And now, this is a six week old fetus. This is a 14 week old fetus. At 20 weeks, the fetus is almost fully developed. Soon it will be able to live totally apart from its mother. Hey, take it easy. There's nothing to it. I give you a local. And I use this little suction thing. It's open like that. Have you been here before? This is my third. I like the place. Give it all my business. How long does it hurt? Not very long. You just gotta take it easy over the weekend. No horseback riding. No sex. Are you okay? Hey, kid. Take it easy. How old is she anyway? Thirteen. Hi. Hey, how are you? Okay? I'm sorry I wasn't here, but I thought it took more time. You okay? Here's your money. I couldn't do it. But why? I mean, it'd all be over. Look, I'll go back in there with you. I'll even stay in the room if you want me to. No, I don't want to. Gina. I can't. But why? Because if my mother had done it, and she damn near did, there wouldn't be any me. That's why. Dad? Uh, I'm gonna have a baby. for your favorite. Well, don't let her. Don't let her what? Back out. Wayne, you have got a great future ahead of you. Don't let some, some small town tramp ruin it for you. Tramp? 
She is not a tramp, Mom. Honey, she is a tramp just like her mother. A cheap tramp. She's hooking you with the oldest trick in the world. Don't let her. Make her get rid of it. I can't make her do anything. Listen to me, Wayne. It's okay for a man to want to get married, but if he does it too Mom. young, he's just asking for trouble. It's not like that, Mom. It's not like that at all. Don't let her ruin your life. It was me as much as it was her. It was both of us. And don't say that. She's not a tramp. She's not a tramp. On the edge of town with that fruit stand? Yes, Winston, whatever. Well, that tramp of a daughter has gone and gotten herself pregnant. And they're trying to blame Wade. Oh, I don't know. They're all the terrible people anyway. Okay. Ruthie, listen, please don't tell anybody, okay? No, I promise. I, I promise that I wouldn't say anything. You can't tell anybody. Yeah, I know. It'll be okay. I'm sorry to bother you. I just... Okay, bye-bye. Wayne. You still love me? Yeah. Sure I do. It's just that I had so many things planned. I did too. Such a lover. Knock it off. It's funny anymore. Hey, I didn't know you had it in you. Boy, I'll tell you one thing. I'm glad I didn't take her out. But, uh, hey, why don't you give me your phone number anyway? Yeah, I didn't think you had it in you. Hey, come on, man. Come on. Oh, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. What's wrong with you? Can't you take a joke? And who says I'm the father, huh? I say, man, said... you're gonna be a daddy and everybody in town knows it, right? Right? We've got a real surprise for you here. We are holding 32 nominations, all for president, no one for secretary. Well, what do we do now? Hey, why don't we go back the old way? Guys for president, girls for secretary. Oh, yeah. no, let's go. No, we voted on it by the council and it was passed. Why is it the girls always go second class? We get the scout work and you get the power and the pay. Just lucky, I guess. So what do we do? Elect two people. The one with the most votes is president, and second most is secretary. Well, what if two boys win this time? We'll take our chances. 
The doctor said I'm doing just fine. He gave me some vitamins. I put me on a special diet. No more pizza. No more pizza? Remember that uh, Navy scholarship test I took last December? Yeah. Well, I just learned today. I got it. No, oh, what? <laughs> Come on. Congratulations. God, that's wonderful. Yeah. Four years, all expenses paid. And then they commissioned me when I graduate. Infinitely. Anchors away, my boy. Anchors away. There's only one problem. What's that? I'm supposed to stay single till I, till I graduate. It's part of the deal. Take it. Gino, we gotta get married. Take it. Gino, wait a minute. Just take it. Please. Take it. She's got to eat, especially now. She can miss a meal or two. It won't kill her. Every woman goes through this. Nine months is a long time, especially when you're doing it alone. What worries me is what happens after she has the baby. You working all the time, you running the stand. Who minds the baby while she's in school? Well, maybe she doesn't go for a while. Just until the kid's big enough to be out with you. Always comes back to me, right? Well, I ain't exactly standing around, you know. And when I was her age, I was a pretty good student, too. I could have gone to college and amounted to something. I could have been a, a teacher or a lawyer. Something. You are something. You're my wife. Her mother. Ain't that something? Look, I was just wondering what could have been if... Play that game? Hell, I could have stayed in the army. I'd have been up for retirement now, been drawn a pension. Got to see a lot more of the world than I'll ever get to see now, that's for sure. You're not the only one that's had to make concessions, Martha. Not by a long sight. I never was any good at book learning, but I could have done better things too, you know. I'm sorry. Well, at least you didn't have to do it alone. At least somebody cared enough to give the child his name. The child his name. That doesn't mean anything now. Sure as hell did then. Did then and still does. Frank? I never asked you this question before. Because I've been afraid of the answer. Frank, would you have married me? I wasn't pregnant.
No. I'd have just kept going. I'd have been one more good old boy just hanging in saloons and shacking with barflies. I thank God every night for you. You and Gina. My life wouldn't be much without you. Jazz. I wish I'd asked a long time ago. I just feel like such a fool. Daddy, you know, I really thought he loved me. I mean, I thought... I don't even know what I thought. Saddled with a baby. College. Just down the drain. Most of all, I won't even have a name. Well, sure it will. Everybody gets a name. Yeah, like what? How about Swinson? It's been pretty good for us. 
I'm so sorry, Daddy. Hey, listen to me. Darling, it don't make any difference what life throws at you. If you want college bad enough, we'll find a way. There's nothing out of reach. Nothing. It's just like my truck. Remember how far I got it, I was always working for other folks. No matter how hard I worked or how good a job I did, sooner or later the job was over and I was laid off. But no more. As long as that truck runs, I got more work than I can handle. <laughs> Won't make me rich, but keeps me free. My own boss. You got a good head on you, darling. You're gonna have a wonderful life. And you'll do whatever you set your mind to. Now, buck up. <laughs> you remember when you were real little, I used to push you in the swing. <laughs> I remember I used to push you out like this and say, hey, you get out of here. <laughs> You'd come back and I'd let you bump into me and I'd act like I was real mad. You'd get hysterical. You'd laugh so hard you'd get the hiccups. Do you remember that, darling? Considering adoption. Well, I, I, I don't know. I, I just want to talk about it. Hey, I know it's a difficult decision to make, and it's painful. Come on, let's talk. Do you have good parents? Oh, Gina, wonderful people out there waiting for babies. The problem is there aren't that many babies available because usually when teenagers get pregnant they either decide on abortion or, or a lot of them decide to keep their babies. the summer in Boston. It was wonderful. Oh, I spent the summer right here. I'm sorry, dear. Well, it's not your fault. Got to have one of these. You know, Gina, I, uh, I do hope that you do plan to finish school. 
You know, we can arrange a special continuation schedule for you. What's wrong with the regular schedule? Well, dear, I, uh... Naturally, I thought under the circumstances... You... Oh, I'm not afraid of hiding from anybody, Mrs. Panich. I mean, not in a town this size. I'll be there opening day. Well, all right. There certainly isn't any law against it, is there? <laughs> I'll see you next week, then. Oh, and I'll be running for election, too. Oh, Gina. Well, come now. Gina, you can't be serious. I was one of the six candidates selected. But you're pregnant. Not for long. Gina, you can't. I... Well, it would be a mockery. Why? An unwed mother as president of the student council? Well, that would be absolutely unthinkable. Mrs. Swenson, I... I will not allow it. No! Thanks for the booties. I've had trouble sleeping lately. I feel like I'm running out on you. You mean I won't even be here when it comes? There's not much you could do if you were. What if I stay, Gina? What if we got married? made a life out of it. We could do that, couldn't we? Will you marry me, Gina? Not now, Wayne. We're not ready for marriage. You know that. We've already made one mistake. Let's not make another one. I've been so selfish. I've been so damn determined to amount to something. And I forgot about the one person I ever really loved.
Hi. Uh, my name is Gina Swenson, and uh, I'm running for president of the student council. Either that or Halloween pumpkin. Yes, I'm pregnant. I made a very big mistake, and I'm not proud of it. But I, I am proud of the fact that this is a human being in here, and I had something to do with creating it. I've learned an awful lot in the last nine months. I learned about worry and gossip and heartbreak. But I've also learned about sacrifice and acceptance and family love. Most of all, I've learned about responsibility. I've learned that each of us has to accept responsibility for everything we do. Everything. No lapses, no cop-outs. When you decide to do something, you live with the consequences. It's as simple as that. I think that's what growing up is all about. And believe me, I've done a lot of growing up in the last nine months. I will see this through, and I'll do whatever's best for my baby. And if I am elected president of the student council, I'll approach that office with the same sense of commitment and responsibility. I'll do my best. I won't cop out. And I'll see it through. Thank you very much.
Welcome to the original Smothers Brothers Comedy Hour. I'm Tom, and this is my uh, original brother, Dick. The Comedy Hour you're about to see is from January 14th, 1968. That's January 14th, 1968. So put your old thinking caps on and go back to January 14th, Sunday, 1968. That's when it was shown on And night. our guests were Patty Duke, the Association, and Don Rickles. You know, having Don Rickles on the show was a humbling experience. Mm -hmm. Naturally, he insulted us a great deal. Mm -hmm. even tried to break up our act. Of course, his nastiness was really sincere <laughs> and heartfelt. <laughs> heartfelt. Actually, Don was a nice guy. Anyway. And he was one of the most popular guest stars of the day. And he appeared on several other 60s shows, including the Adams Family, the Dick Van Dyke Show, and the Wild Wild West. And he credits Johnny Carson with giving him his big break in 1965 when he was first booked as a guest on The Tonight Show. Mm -hmm. Our big, get, our big break was on The Tonight Show, too, with uh, Jack Parr. That's right. Patty Duke had several different images. In the 50s, she was a lovable child star. Then in 1962, she won an Oscar for her performance as a young Helen Keller in The Miracle Worker. Mm. But by the time she appeared on our show, she was beginning to reveal a more adult side. Yeah. And she had just appeared in Valley of the Dolls, which was based on a steamy bestseller by Jacqueline Suzanne. Mm -hmm. And the uh, role of a re was a real departure for Patty and helped showcase her as an adult, and making that transition from child to adult uh, mm. acting is not very easy to do, and she pulled it off. Our musical guests on this comedy hour were the members of the association. They appeared on a show several times, performing a variety of their hits. During the 60s, the association had two number one songs. They were uh, Cherish and Wendy, and their last top ten hit was Everything That Touches You. Hit the charts right after they performed it on the comedy hour. Now let's take a look at the Smothers Brothers Comedy Hour from January 14th, 1968. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, before we start, I'd like to mention to Tom that we have a marvelous opportunity tonight to uh, present a public service message for the U.S. government. Oh, boy, that's my favorite thing. I'm Isn't a big really fan of the government, yeah. Well, <laughs> as you know... We'll be. <laughs> as you know, Tommy. <laughs> and you want to help out? I definitely do. I'm, I'm def serious. Yes. Now, as you know, at the beginning of the year, President Johnson, for economy reasons, yeah. asked all Americans to refrain from traveling, traveling abroad. He what? asked if this is... People are aware of this. I didn't know that. I just wanted to remind them. You mean we're not allowed to travel to Italy or... No, not to Italy or France. We shouldn't travel to Germany, Germany or no. Spain or That's anything That's right. Like... Nothing abroad. Absolutely nothing abroad. They Our don't president... want us, American citizens, to travel abroad? Not they. Our, our government is asking us as citizens, good yeah. citizens, to refrain from traveling to foreign lands. Okay, all you guys in Vietnam, come on home. <laughs> Brothers Comedy Hour with guest stars Patty Duke, The Association, and Paulson, and special guest star Don Rickles, our Jimmy Joy singers, the Louis Vuitton dancers, and Nelson Riddle and his orchestra. From Television City in Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen, meet the Smothers Brothers. Top of the show, it's a, it's a bright number, exciting. You, you take it. I, uh, I said take it. You take it. Uh, you, uh, if a fella says he doesn't want to take it. He doesn't want to take maybe it. Maybe you just, I don't. You just don't under, You don't understand. I understand. You don't understand. Okay, I don't understand. Over your head. But I'm an American. I don't want to take it. <laughs> you don't understand it, right? 
Well, it's kind of a dumb song. He died with a toothache in his heel. <laughs> the lyrics are not important. Tommy, it's the rhythm of the song. It's a very lively song, and it fulfilled a great need in our early frontier society. In some communities, Tommy, this song was the only means of social intercourse. <laughs> now you understand. I don't understand, but I'll go along with it. <laughs> understand, but I don't want to go along with it. All right, it doesn't matter. You see, in the more religious communities, the yeah. young people were so restricted by their elders, they weren't allowed to do anything. They weren't allowed to smoke, to yeah. drink, to, to dance even. And when a young man was with a young woman, yeah. he couldn't hold her hand. He couldn't hug her. He couldn't kiss her. He couldn't touch her. He oh, couldn't... yeah? Yes, right. It was oh, a... Dan Tucker. <laughs> That's right. It was a courting song. Oh. His only way he could release his emotions and express his emotions That's were with songs like, Oh, Dan Tucker. Oh, you mean, do you mean that all I have to do is just sing a couple, if I saw a girl, I'd just sing a couple of verses of Old Dan Tucker and boom, that's it? <laughs> you see? <laughs> I want to do some other things. You bet your Tucker I would. <laughs> you probably want to do something like the stomp or the slap dance. Yeah, the slump or the slap dance. No, I said the stomp or the slap dance. Slump they were the... very, very popular in those days because of the circumstance they, oh, they yeah? lived in. And you put down your a banjo and I'll put down the bass and I'll show you. Okay. What they did at the, you know. This is the slop and the stamp? No, stamp and the slap. Okay. Now, what I want you to do is to sing a cappella. Uh -huh. Uh, uh, dance. Yeah. Okay. One, two, three, five. Get out of the way for old Nan Tucker. He's too late. He's his supper. Then you go like this. I'm gonna trade in old Nan Tucker. Oh, Nan Tucker. Well, that sure is a mind blower. <laughs> well, that's the way it was done 150 years ago, Tommy. Well, things I have just, improved, haven't I, they? They certainly have. Now, picture. Come here. I'm curious. Now, picture yourself as a young man in 150 years ago, settling in the, in the in the beautiful hills of Kentucky. Yeah. There's a girl you see. You're crazy about her. She's yeah. lovely, vivacious, yeah. exciting, yeah. beautiful. You yeah. want her. Yeah. You want her to know how you feel. Yes. Yeah. But you can't touch her. You can't kiss her. You can't hug her. You can't hold her. You can't do it, but you've got to express your emotions. You have to release these emotions. Oh. You see what I mean? I see <laughs> I see her coming, Dicky. She's beautiful. Walking do? down the walking down little walkway. She's winking at me. Mm. <laughs> wow! <laughs> Get out of the way for all the way for all that. <laughs> oh, oh, I hurt myself. <laughs> Coming up, music from the Association. In my most secure moments, I still can't believe I'm spending those moments with you. And comedy from Don Rickles. I look like a gypsy in a nude wandering around the desert. <laughs> Tonight on E! At 9, get ready for another half hour of wacky TV, zany people, and unmissable talk show such. It is a fact that one of America's most plentiful sources of folklore tradition is what some people refer to as the dirty joke. Now they're made up by all sorts of people, but of course are never, never written down. They are passed on from mouth to mouth. The same mouths that are used for drinking milk, eating apple pie, and kissing mummy and daddy. <laughs> now one of the most classic forms of this great American tradition of folk jokes is the traveling salesman and the farmer's daughter. Now, there are as many variations of this form as there are ways of telling it, but there are always three main characters. Hi, uh, I'm the traditional traveling salesman from the traditional traveling salesman in the Farmer Daughter story. Now, I just sort of travel around trying to sell stuff until I find a punchline. <laughs> And, of course, the farmer's daughter, played by Patty Duke. Hi. I'm the traditional farmer's daughter and the traditional traveling salesman in the farmer's daughter story. And I'm always innocent and naive, but curious. And generally, I'm the punchline. <laughs> and, of course, there is the ever-vigilant farmer. I'm 
the traditional farmer and the traditional starveling self and farmer's daughter stories. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have the usual small bedroom farm, and I always make sure the punchline is set up. It's my job to find out the answer to the musical question. How you gonna keep them down on the farm after? Well, I don't want to spoil a punchline. <laughs> Yes, there are hundreds of variations of the traveling salesman and farmer daughter stories, and none of them have ever been done on television before. And we feel that there's no reason that these stories cannot be told on television, of course, uh, providing they are told with good taste. And so for the very first time on television, have you heard the one about the traveling salesman and the farmer's daughter? How do you do, sir? I'm a traveling salesman. My car broke down just up the road, and I was wondering if you could uh, put me up for the night. What do you mean, put you up for the night? Well, if I just had some place to sit, you know. It's... Well, there's no place to sit here. You can sit out in the barn if you want. Oh, Papa. It's so cold and dark out there. <laughs> Hello, you must be the farmer's punchline. I mean, that daughter. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> excellent, excellent. <laughs> this ought to be a real barn burner. <laughs> I think you're right, daughter. It's cold and dark in the barn. But the only place for you to sit in the house is with my daughter in the parlor. Oh, well, if that's all there is, I guess that's all there is. <laughs> Just wait a minute. Oh, I warn you, stranger. Don't you mess around with my daughter. Oh. Daughter, come here. Listen, you can't trust those city slickers. They're smooth talkers. And silver tongue wonders. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now listen, if he tries to hold your hand, you yell red and I'll come running. And if he tries to put his arm around you, yell white. And if he tries to kiss you, yell blue. I'll be uh, sleeping in the next room with my shotgun. All right, Daddy, but before you go, can you tell me one thing? What's that, daughter? Why do you sleep with your shotgun? <laughs> Maybe he gets the bang out of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, I'm the traveling uh, salesman and I'm always looking for a punchline. <laughs> Because that wasn't it. <laughs> I'll say it wasn't. Daughter, now remember, holding hands is red, putting his arm around you is white, and kissing you is blue. And I guess that covers everything there is. <laughs> Good night. Good night, Dad. Good night, sir. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have reached the point uh, for the punchline. Now, this is where the variations are most plentiful, and from the hundreds of hilarious endings for traditional traveling salesman and farmer daughter's jokes, we could not find one suitable for television. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it. <laughs> we... <laughs> Hooray for the red, white, and blue! <laughs> Just ahead, the association. Hello, students. On tonight's Sock Soup class, we'll introduce you to a man.
Directly ahead, Don Rickles critiques the smothers. Can I, can I tell you something as a friend? What? You don't light up a room. <laughs> this week... Someone on our show who equals our musical talents. That's true. That's right. <laughs> the last one was Betty Davis. <laughs> however, tonight, however, however, we're very fortunate tonight to have someone who both my brother and myself, uh, cool it, who both my brother and myself have been waiting to play with for years. <laughs> a very sweet human being, a great, great musician, and a very dear friend of ours, Mr. Don Rickles. Yes, sir. I can't go through with this. You know, you, you got me standing here. You, you, it's supposed to be a clever show. I mean, you, you bring on the guests. I look ridiculous standing here with a with a cockamamie tambourine. Here. I look like a gypsy in the nude wandering around the desert. I've got to bring you out here and let the public see you in a, in a different light. That's, they, true. that's right. They want to see you do something different for a change. Really? Yes, can, I, can I tell you something as a friend? What? You don't light up a room. <laughs> All right, it, it, I'll do something different. You guys make $25 million, uh, and the people are sitting around the house now saying, Hey, Ma, the boys are doing something different. Let's turn on Bonanza. <laughs> hey, where are you going with now, that stuff? Now, look at now. There's so many ways you can present a, a comic like yourself. You come out here, True. and we want to have the people like you, have you join us and sing and be one of us. <laughs> we want you to be one of us. Wear a red coat. Wonderful. Yeah. I feel like we're three Mounties and the horse died. <laughs> I mean, if you like the show, get a chair out there. We went all the trouble and the expense to get you an expensive instrument, musical instrument. This is wonderful. Don't you have a kazoo with tissue paper? I'll give you another side of me. How about this? You know what? Me, I'm not through yet. When I talk, have a little respect. Am I right? Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> We're having a heck of a time. Join in, gang. <laughs> You've got to be, you can't be afraid to do anything different. You know, yeah. you're approaching that stage in life where you get a little stratified. Yeah, stratified. Strat 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 That's a biggie. I write that down. <laughs> when you hear the bell, go to history. <laughs> Let me say, let me talk to him. Uh, listen, when it's your turn, I'll let you know. Okay, guys. Let <laughs> a boy, Dick. Tell him what you told me yeah, backstage. Like you don't me. need him. Yeah, we don't <laughs> boy, I, I mean, you guys are in show business. You're, you're big experts. Big experts. Yeah. Both of you have been in a, the business tops three weeks, and you're out here rolling, making 40 million, and I'm working in a market in Encino. <laughs> it sure does tell me something. It tells me I'm getting fed up with you. That's what it means. <laughs> Jump in when you think of anything, Tommy. <laughs> you two guys, could you hold up the cards? We're trying to entertain. 
Ah, uh, he will. But you guys are lucky. You have to admit it. I mean, you made a whole career out of your out of your mother. That's right. <laughs> Mom always liked you best. My mommy always liked you best. Where are you going with that stuff? I spoke to your mother, oh, yeah, and yeah. I'm I'm a friend. Yeah. yeah. Can't stand either one of you. <laughs> Yeah, that's very funny. Do you have a mother? <laughs> Do I have a mother? <laughs> You're gonna get yours. <laughs> You got some job, though, boy. It's, it's easy getting laughed. It's easy for you guys. You follow Ed Sullivan, right? right. One of the great all-time booming personalities. Am I right? I mean, Ed Sullivan, I could stand in front of an open grave and juggle for a half hour and get more laughs than you guys. Randolph Scott, when he's rolling, could get more laughs. You guys don't need this. You should get a better job. Hang around a cemetery and watch a poppy grow. <laughs> Oh, wow, 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 wow. Give him a bucket of farina and tell him to wait in the car. <laughs> what we do is we, 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 we have to have some talent. We have to play our instruments. How about well, that? Well, yeah, but uh, let's face it. I'm, I play the bass fiddle. Yeah, but you come out with the bass fiddle. Boom, 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 boom. And you need a cue card to read. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> I got an uncle in a rest home. He does better than you. Oh, yeah? Ah! <laughs> Boy, this guy's dynamite. <laughs> Later on, you're going to spell pussy cat. <laughs> Well, you know, things are going to, I want to say in front of to you and all of America that, that Don and I and my brother and myself are all very good friends and you're a fine comedian. We sure are. And uh, the minute your, your material is, is great and if your timing improved, you'd have it all put together, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 what? Why? Get out, but can't take it! <laughs> you better get him a hot bath. He's starting to go. <laughs> Okay, guys, I, I don't know, boy. You, you come out here with your red jackets, you look adorable. <laughs> you want to get yourself little apples with flags and run around the room going, we're rich, we're rich. <laughs> Come on, Don. Don, we just want to bring you out here and be friends with you and, and, and have you work on the show. Well, yeah, well, you come okay. out here, you By the way, it. I have to admit, you, you, you both recorded an album. Is that no, correct? I, no, no, I no. recorded it. Oh, you, you were eliminated from the album. <laughs> right. Wonderful. Right. Well, get back on the truck and look for day work. <laughs> I understand it's number 953 and slipping fast. Well, why don't you just stand in the window and give the albums away? Maybe you'll get lucky with that. You know what I mean, kid? The album's not very good anyway. I buy that, too. That's what you told me backstage, that his album is bad, but you're great working alone. Yeah. Up in a tree with a fig plant and your big guitar. <laughs> I want to tell you something, Tommy. You don't need this guy. This man's vicious. It's all you, sweetheart. Thank Come you. out here alone, work with a girl, do a little number, and off, and get rid of the dummy kid because he don't particularly like it. And I'm going to tell your mother how you're fed up with him pushing the medicine away from the night table. He don't need you. What do you think of that? <laughs> Stop standing there and go, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Fast and bright, because you're both stars Listen, and good that, ones. That, that's the point. Fast and bright. That's what our show is. Fast and bright. <laughs> is like that what it is? Pat Tell the crowd. <laughs> Pat Paulson. Wonderful guy. We I must found admit. Him. Tommy found Pat Paulson. Did you really? Discovered him. One of the last of the great rocket scientists. Pat Paulson. <laughs> Met him in the hall before. I yeah. said, hi, Pat. He said, I want my dad die. <laughs> He's a real dummy. Put him in a home with him. <laughs> Boy, I wonder what you two guys would have done in life. Truthfully, think about it. If you weren't in show business. Well, no. I'll tell you, you'd probably drive a tractor. No, yeah. I'd probably sell a tractor. You'd probably sell a tractor? Yeah. I like drive a tractor. Don't louse it up. Okay. <laughs> well, what would I be doing? Hey, you'd be under it. <laughs> Isn't this fun, gang? We're staying up late and everything. <laughs> Later on, we'll put on our pajamas and eat the cookies and get sick. <laughs> you know, what are you going to say now? Well, nothing. Uh, I'm through. I'm just going to go take a shower and go home early. Okay. But there's something, really, uh, 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 as a friend, your brother is holding you back. Really, I mean that's sincere. You, you could be a lot dumber than you are. How? <laughs> How? <laughs> okay, this is... Okay, we've had... Well, I can. Hey. <laughs> My turn. Okay. okay. Gang, we're going to finish the song. There's oh. one thing we are noted for, yeah. Tom and I, in our tech integrity. When we start something, we finish it, no mm. matter what. We're all right along. And this is no matter what. Okay. One, two, three, four. Don't play a tune for me. If this show wins an Emmy, I'll kill myself. <laughs>
We'll be right back with Don Rickles, Patty Duke, the Association, and Pat Paulson on the second half of the Smothers Comedy Brothers Hour. and myself would like to do for you a series of brief but pregnant conversations. Poignant. Poignant conversations. <laughs> Conversation, take one. Oh, yeah, well, what's he got that I haven't got? Awareness. What's that? <laughs> Conversation, take two. And you're actually a native of Buttonville. Yep. I mean, you've been around here all your life. Well, not yet. <laughs> Conversation, take three. Uh, do you love me? No. But I thought you did. No. Well, thanks for the thought anyway. <laughs> Conversations, take four. Pardon me, sir. What time is it right now? It's, uh... Now. It's, uh... Now. It's, uh... Now. Uh, now. Uh, now. Uh, now. Uh, now. Uh, now. Uh, Conversations, take five. Where are you going? Nowhere. Oh, I thought you were going home. What made you think that? Well, you had your hat on, so I thought you were leaving. No, I'm not leaving. See, you just got you have to keep your eye on around. You got to keep your eye around on things around here because a lot of hats have been stolen. Really? <laughs> yeah, I'm stealing this one. <laughs> Conversation, take six. Well, you know the old saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Conversation, take seven. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder what you'd know if you knew what life was all about. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Conversation, take eight. Look at all you've given me tonight. You took me to dinner for a lovely walk. You wrote me a poem and made me a bed of rose petals. And I haven't given you anything, have I? No, I wouldn't say that. Uh, I wouldn't say that at all. You, you gave me someone to eat with, and it was a nice night for a walk. Uh, I write a lot of poems anyway, and it, it also gave me something different to do with flowers. <laughs> oh. Well, I guess we're about even then, huh? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Good night. Good night. <laughs> right. Now, once again, the association.
Don Rickles and Patty Duke star in the story of Pocahontas. Folks, join in. We're having a heck of a time. Hello, students. On tonight's Talk Soup class, we'll... It all took place in the year of 1607, right here in the village of Chief Powat, where brawny braves gathered to do their colorful traditional ritual war dance. Oh, uh, now, 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 me talk. How? How, how? Me, Chief Powat, these are wigwams of my people. Gawa, Gawa. Mighty warriors, fierce pride, quick arrows. Ngawa Tawana! You like this? <laughs> this is the dialogue, folks. I warn you. This is the high point of the sketch. From here on in, <clears throat> downhill. Ngawa <laughs> Naka! Man. So you know the trouble our tribe is in. Lower, lower, dummy, will you? Or you'll be back with the bedpan. Fingers get him cramps. Fingers get him cramps? Ah, uh, too bad. One chief to kiss him? I told you, folks, all downhill. We're really rolling now. Oh, here comes the broad. Where is Dora Pohunk? Poca Pohunkus? Where is Dora Pocahontas? <laughs> Here's daughter Pocahontas. Your hands, mother. Chip in, we get full dress for girls. <laughs> How come you're dressed like this? Is disgrace. Oh, it's the latest Indian fashion. The mini ha-ha skirt. <laughs> <laughs> Watch how sit or ha-ha may be on you. <laughs> Where's the laugh? They promised me a laugh. <laughs> uh, Pocahontas, you live many moons now. Hold card up or never finish Indian talk. <laughs> for you. Oh, thank you, Father. How wonderful it will be to have my own husband. You're a so lousy actor. <laughs> to cherish, to adore. Who is it? Mm -hmm. Did I give her a ring now or during ceremony? I don't care what you do. You got it. <laughs> I should say. She likes you, but she doesn't love you. <laughs> rub, dummy, rub. Forget all this. Rub. Hurry up. <laughs> what not to love? Have legs like antelope. Heart like lion. Eyes like eagle. Uh, and breath like buffalo. <laughs> I did like that. They give her lines like breath jokes. <laughs> medicine man, what should I do? Oh, medicine man, talk to spirit. When I my what are you going to do? Swanee, shut up. <laughs> While you're at it, talk to the writers. It's going down and down. I've captured pale face from Jamestown. 
get rid of the trick or treat suit. <laughs> now it's getting interesting. They're bringing out the handsome guy. All right, pale face. What do you say for yourself? You guys will never get away with this because I've I've been dropping breadcrumbs all the way here. And nobody's coming. Big out. deal. Uh, big uh, deal. Give pale face two points for a scout badge. Now tell me, what is your name? My name is John Smith. Oh, a wise guy, huh? What is your name? John Smith. <laughs> what do you think this is, a motel? What is your name? <laughs> John Smith. J-O-H-N. Haven't you ever heard of a John before? <laughs> captain John Smith. Now he's a captain. What do you got, a volleyball team? <laughs> yeah, we've done a few of those guys. I told you. I <laughs> I've warned him a million times. I've do the funny stuff. Go to the beauty parlor and get that fixed. <laughs> mm. Mm. By the way, what is your name? John Smith. I've asked you. I've asked you a million times. That's enough. I can't take it anymore. Now, enough of standing bull. Bring out chopping block. I mean, I'm not through yet. Step back. Bring out chopping. And never touch an engine. Never touch an engine. Bring out chopping. If you're lonely, go in your wiki up. Bring out chopping block. On with execution. Wait! Father. <laughs> Heart of young squaw, flutter like bird when she sees great face of white warrior. You're terrible, Lizzie. I'm waiting for you to become an eagle. They live together in the forest. Whooping. Any time. Make them happy, father, with a big mouth. <laughs> One for Pocahontas, one nothing. <laughs> Good. Now that you've ruined your career, we can get on with this opus. <laughs> I'm laughing because the crowd isn't. You, <laughs> the stranger. Please, Father, spare him, and I will marry the ugly, disgusting... What are you, a bunch? What is all this? Hey, I get the feeling I'm working with an umpire. I said I'll marry him if you spare him. Well, you'll say it again until I'm ready to say my line. <laughs> Boy, would I like to see the honeymoon. All right. Pocahontas has spoken. Off with the execution. Could you blink your eyes something so I know you're here? <laughs> Off with the execution. On with the marriage. Wait! Oh, get back, you dummy. <laughs> Will I you make up your mind around here? She was right. <laughs> <laughs> I can't let this happen. Rather than let this lovely maiden fair throw her body to that disgusting old Indian. Yes, friends. <laughs> I, I will sacrifice my myself on your chopping block. So kill me. No, kill me. I got a better idea. Kill me. <laughs> you do me a tremendous favor right now. My mother's watching, and I'm going to ask you one more time. What's your name? What did I say it was? John Smith. <laughs> Where does it say, pale face, hit cheap? You say John Smith. Shut up. Huh? <laughs> you with rickets and bad breath. Out. <laughs> and you, honey, go home. Get a good night's sleep. Tomorrow morning, you'll get up and kill your agent for getting you this job. <laughs> But what about me? I mean, what about me? <laughs> you really stink in this. Huh? <laughs> Are you still here? There he is, folks. The star of the show. The Einstein of the yo-yo set. He goes up and down, and the yo-yo stands there. <laughs> okay, my brother and I think you're really one of the funniest men in the world. Not here, but somewhere else. <laughs> you know how to rip into a guy, Tommy. <laughs> I want to tell you, though, Tommy, seriously. It's been a lot of fun, really. And you, you and your brother have treated me just royally. And I, I thank you for putting up with my nonsense. You're, oh. you're a real great guy. And that's no baloney. Oh, thank you, Don. It's our pleasure. Uh, thanks so much. And really. uh, did you enjoy playing uh, what you, the Indian thing? Oh, uh, Powhatan was one of my thrilling parts. I have the chills all over my body. Yeah, I got the same experience from playing John Smith. <laughs> <laughs> you never learn, do you? <laughs> Uh, 
Hello, students. On tonight's Sock Soup class, we'll introduce you to a man named Sky, who was born Pamela, who, when he was very young, decided to... We would like to thank our guests for tonight, Miss Patty Duke, the Association, and Don Rickles. Yes. Yeah. Next week, we're especially proud to have with us a great comedian, Mr. Sid Caesar. And we'll also have back with us that exciting new singing group, Pat Paulson and the Fathers. We'll also have uh, with us Glenn Campbell, who will be singing his hit song, By the Time I Get to Phoenix. That's right. We're also very happy to have a remarkable group of young people called the Blackstone Rangers. That's right. And what's remarkable about them is, besides their talent, the fact that just, just a short while ago, they used to be a street gang in the slums, the slums of Chicago. That's right. But they got together and redirected their energy and to what amounts to some, is to some marvelous entertainment. So we hope you'll be with us next week to enjoy the Blackstone Rangers. And see you next good. week, everybody. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Welcome to the Mike Douglas Show. This week with Mike's co-host, is Patty Duke. And now, here's Mike. Thank you. Thank you. The one I love belongs to somebody else. She means her tender songs for somebody else And even when I have my arms around her I know her thoughts are strong for somebody else You know the hand I hold belongs to somebody else And I bet they're not so cold for somebody else Cause it's tough to be alone on a shelf It's worse to fall in love by yourself When the one I love belongs to somebody else Not the hand I hold belongs to somebody else I'll bet they're not so cold for somebody else It's tough to be alone on a shelf Fall in love by yourself when the one I love belongs to somebody else. I, I got to tell a little secret because uh, normally people don't do things like this on, on a show like this, but our co-hostess is really not feeling well today. Uh, there's been a bug going around here in Philadelphia. Uh, people are getting, you know, swollen glands and very sore throats, and she has that. And I suggested that she take a little brandy. <laughs> we might have the happiest co-hostess around. <laughs> Here's Miss Patty Duke. Welcome.
type of person. What, you, you know what that dress reminds me? Can, can I say this? You can say, listen, <laughs> you can open like that, you can say anything. <laughs> no, it's true, but you, you're not feeling well. No, she's I a little nauseous. I, maybe she's expecting. No, I wish I was. <laughs> well, keep your fingers crossed. <laughs> I can tell. Do you want a baby? Sure, I do. Of course. I wanted but, one. But you know, when I was a kid, Mother used to have uh, uh, oil cloth, oil cloth on, the the, on the kitchen table. <laughs> And, uh, My husband bought me this dress and dared me to wear it, and uh, like a dope, I did. <laughs> is that, it's is plastic. That? It's yes, um, I vinyl, you know, like boots and things like that. Mm -hmm. And your mother's oil cloth. <laughs> you know, yesterday we we talked about the miracle worker. I can't talk enough about that because it's, you were fantastic in Thank that. You. And she won the Oscar. You all know. Great performance. How old were you when you made Miracle Worker? I was 12 when I did the play and 14 when I did the movie. And how old, uh, how long after, the, how soon after that did you do the uh, Patty Duke show? Um, we made the pilot film, which is like a test film mm -hmm. for the Patty Duke show. Uh, before I got the Oscar, it was approximately a year and a half, two years when I started the series. So you're still in your early I was, teens? Yeah, 14, 15. Uh, whose idea was it for you to portray uh, the double part, you know, playing a twin? Well, when, once something gets off the ground, you know, a lot of people like to think it was their idea, so I've never really been sure. I think that Sidney Sheldon, who wrote it, and Bill Asher, who uh, was the director-producer, really came up with the idea. So wonderful. They came up with, you know, many different ideas, and finally, you know, everybody decided on, on the uh, two characters. Was schooling a problem for you when you were Yeah, doing it really was. Uh, I used to love school, you know, and then when I started working, I had to go on correspondence, which was I would get my assignments in the mail from school, and then in between shots or while other people were doing scenes, I would have to go and do my homework. And somehow uh, doing a television show really isn't conducive to wanting to go in and do your homework. That's and right. it was very difficult. And uh, uh, I sort of fell down on my grades a little until uh, the Board of Education called up and said, uh, you better start doing your schoolwork. You I have a feeling, anymore. though, that your IQ is very high. Have you ever have taken I don't an IQ? Know. You don't you know, really know? They took it in school uh, when I was in high school. You know, they give you an aptitude test. But they never told me what it was. Maybe it was so terrible they couldn't. <laughs> how did you study? I mean, doing a, a television series and all those people around. I mean, how did it was you really hard. I must say, though, the crew and the other actors were terribly cooperative. Uh, I'm not sure how many of my uh, book reports were mine or theirs. <laughs> you know, I've asked this question of young people uh, who have become stars at very early ages before and I have never gotten an answer that I have been completely satisfied with and the question is do you feel having started your career at such a tender age that you have missed a great deal not having gone to school as uh, children do? I really do Mike. Um, I feel that were I not in show business I would have lost a lot that I have today you know there are many advantages that I wouldn't have had but I did miss uh, the sort of everyday normal things that teenagers have. You know, I, did, I never went to a prom, and, you did know... Did you ever go steady or anything like that? Like, no, no, see, you never did. All that, no. uh, I'm sure it, uh, my mother wouldn't have let me anyway, but at least I could have tried, you know. <laughs> but uh, uh, I did miss a lot, and, uh, you know, I guess we all have regrets about our childhood. Sure. And if I had it to do over, I would love, you know, if you can make that perfect plan to start acting when I was 18. But since I couldn't have that perfect plan, I'm happy the way it is now. Really you know, the obvious follow-up question to that, and I know people would love to hear your answer to this. You said a moment ago, and I know you're sincere, that you want children. How would you feel about your own children doing what you have done? Well, Harry and I uh, haven't really discussed it that much, but my feeling, and I'm sure we share the same feeling because we do on most things like this, is that I would uh, not encourage them, you know, I would not groom them for that. If when they were old enough, they decided that's what they wanted. There isn't much I could do about it, but I certainly would want them to have as normal an education as possible, as normal a childhood as possible, you know, whoever knows what normal is, really. But uh, I think it's very hard for children uh, who are not even in show business. Uh, the, the, uh, the world is competitive enough for them, just going to school and being on the baseball team and the football team and, and dating and who's the prettiest and all that is hard enough. Mm -hmm. without having to go on interviews and be rejected because children oh, yes. it's not like uh, they tune out and they don't understand they know when they've been rejected mm -hmm. and they feel that they let other people down if they don't get the part they were supposed to get that's adding to that pressure that we it's, keep it's talking a terrible about on young pressure. people uh, when you think back of all the the scenes and the episodes that you did on the patty duke show is, is there any one episode that stands out in your mind as maybe being yeah there are a couple uh the first one was actually in the first season 
was Cleopatra, and I loved that because I could kind of dress up and make believe I was an adult. See. You did play yeah, and they, and they put lots of fantastic makeup. I was two hours in the makeup chair every morning. We have a little film clip showing Patty in that makeup. We're going to show it to you now. Just a minute, just a few seconds. Uh, Not now to hear these things. Not now to hear these things. Patty, who is this man? Look here. We're going to show a picture here on television. Not that man. That I know who that. I know who that looks like. That's Mike Douglas. No. Oh, yeah. Who is? Who is? Th let's try it again. Who is this man? Let me it's try it you, again. Mike who is this man? Let me try it with the left hand. <laughs> who is this man? That's my husband. <laughs> there he is. Very good. Who is That's that man? That's my husband. And how, yeah. how did you meet him? My husband was uh, the assistant director on my show. Uh, the first season and part of the second season. He directed some of your and shows, And then he too. was the director of my show, the third season. Yeah, a couple of shows. Was he a tough season. director? Uh, well, we were married by then. And oh, was, I see. You know, uh, we were trying awfully hard to be nice to each other. Did know? he ever raise his voice? No. Uh, when he lowers his voice, that's when I'm in well, trouble. Well, that's when you're yeah. in trouble, I see. He was whispering a lot on that show. Does he have, does he have, uh, a, a, does he call you by your complete name, first, middle, and last when he's angry? Have you ever heard people who do that, you know, uh, they'll call their children darling sweetheart and suddenly it's Mary Lou so-and-so, the whole name, and you know you're in trouble when you hear your full name. You no, know? because if he said my full name, you know what it would be? What? Anna Marie Patricia Duke Falk. Anna Marie Patricia, Patricia Duke, Duke Falk. Falk. By then he wouldn't be angry anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, he says, Pat, like that. We have a, a part of an episode here, one of the episodes called The Kittens. Yeah, watch, this is watch what this. Harry directed. Going to find you a very good home. Yes, I agree. Hello, Dorothy, Kathy Lane. You'll never guess what I just found. Just what you've always been looking for. What do you mean, how tall is he? I'm talking about the cat I found in our driveway. You're not interested? All right, Dorothy. If I find a boy in our driveway, I'll be sure to let you know. co-hostess, Patty Duke. And now, here's Mike. The bird with feathers of blue is waiting for you back in your own backyard. You'll find your happiest lies right under your eyes back in your now you can go to the east, go to the west, someday you'll come 
all weary at heart, back where you started from. You'll find your castles in Spain, these your window pane, back in your own backyard. Oh, well, you can't go to the east, go to the west, someday you'll come, all weary at heart, back where you started from. favorite songs. Moon River, wider than a mile, I'm crossing you in style someday. You Wherever you're going, I'm going your way Two drifters off to see the world There's such a lot of world to see Same rainbows and waiting round the dam, my huckleberry friend. My very lovely and talented co-hostess, Miss Patty Duke. Thank you. Really lovely. You're not nervous, are you, Patty? Fine. <laughs> She's backstage saying, "If I forget this song, I'll <laughs> never forget myself." Help me through it. You ready? I know I stand in line until you think you have the time to spend an evening with me. And if we go someplace to dance, I know that there's a chance you won't be leaving with me. And afterwards we go into a quiet little place and have a drink or two. And then I go and spoil it all by saying something stupid like, I love you. It's just a line to you, to me it's true And never seemed so right before I practice every day to find some clever things to say To make the meaning come true And then I think I'll wait until the evening gets late And I'm alone with you Time is right, your perfume fills my head, the stars get red, and oh, the night is blue. And then I go and spoil it all by saying something stupid like, I love you. I love you. 